Stanislaw here with Motion VFX, and in this lesson, I'll teach you how to use the new M Tracker 3D to suspend these Polaroids in your clip. Inside Apple Motion, I've already brought in my clip that I want to track and place my 3D objects into. So I'll need to navigate into my library, select filters, and navigate down to Motion VFX, and pick M Tracker 3D. We're going to drag and drop this directly onto our clip. Next, go ahead and click the track button to start your track. The tracking has been sped up for this edit. Once it's done tracking, click the target button and set your track by just clicking on the point that you'd like to set your object to. Next, we'll have to go into our favorites tab where it's created a new 3D group and camera. It'll give us a dialog if we want to change our 3D groups to 2D. Let's keep them as 2D for this. Now with our 3D group selected, we can review the track just to see if it's going to stick on to our target. Okay, let's go ahead and start putting in some objects for our drop zones. I'm going to go into import some media and I already have several different clips I'm going to bring in. I have this Polaroid image and then a series of different images I'm going to put inside these Polaroids. So I'm going to click and select all of these by holding on to the shift key and click import. All of them are going to pop into that 3D group since that's what I just had selected. And that's okay. We just want the Polaroid inside this group. So I'll take the rest of these, put them in their own group, and I'll just type in DZ contents. And I'll go ahead and I'll close that and turn that off. With our Polaroid, we want to make sure that it is inside our 3D group. So if it's not in your 3D group, make sure it is. Next, in the inspector, make sure that the properties are zeroed out. This way it'll use the parameters set in that 3D group. With that 3D group selected, let's add an object. And this time we'll add a drop zone. Now this isn't going to look quite right, but that's okay. We're going to make both of these into a new group and we'll call this one image one. Next, let's work with just this group. So I'm going to click this icon here, which will take me into just that group's view. My drop zone is above my Polaroid, so I'll drop it down by using command left bracket. With my drop zone selected, I'll just scale this down to fit inside that Polaroid a little bit better. Next, let's mask off the rest of this image. This way, only the inside of that drop zone will show in that Polaroid. Okay, now if I click off of this, this should take me back to my original view. And that's still a little big, but that's all right, because now let's work with the scale and put it in position. I think I'll take this down to about 8. Now using the 3D gizmo controls, let's rotate this. And I'll give this a quick preview. Hey, that's looking like it's going to stick on pretty well, but let's continue to work with this a little bit. It's a little large right now, so I think I'll take this down to about 5%. And this one is going to be our base. So I'm going to close this one for right now and add a behavior to it. Inside our behaviors, I have one called rate. It's buried in there, so I'm going to use the search bar to pull up rate. And what rate does is it will just steadily move parameter value over time. So with rate selected, we're just going to apply this to maybe about five on the transformation of the rotation in the X axis. If I play this through, that is going to slowly rotate five degrees. Now let's double that up. I'm going to duplicate this. And instead of the X, let's change this one to Y. And I'll make this one about seven degrees. Now with this image all set up, all I have to do now is duplicate this and we'll give it a new name and start moving it in position. So I'm gonna drag this one out over here and start working with this rotation. And at this point, it's really a matter of just setting up how you want it to look because if you'll notice, all my tracks are going to stay perfectly locked on. 
So I can start having a lot of fun with this. I can really start maneuvering these and arranging them the way I'd like. So I'm gonna make another duplicate, call this one number three. And I'll continue duplicating these and just set up our scene. I think I'll make just two more. I really encourage you to check out some of the different controls that you have inside Apple Motion. Just using these 3D gizmos lets me line up my scene a lot faster than if I had to use the controls inside the inspector. Now, if you remember, all of these had those different rate controls on them, which means that they're all kind of rotating at the same rate. If we want to change that up, we can go into any of the different rate behaviors and just make some slate alterations. And what that'll do is add a little bit more variety to all of them and a little bit more randomness. So be sure to kind of play with some of the different settings. That way they're not all going to be identical. And with our very last one, I'm going to pull this out just a bit further from our actor. Okay, now if we want to fill in these different drop zones, I'll just click on my different drop zone and here I can add my different media. So by just opening these up inside my inspector, I can change it to the selected media and I'll do that for the rest of these. Using the inspector controls, I can fine tune any of these if I need to resize any of the contents of my drop zone as well. Okay, that's looking good, but it still feels just a little off. And the reason for that is that these are really bright compared to the rest of my scene. So let's go ahead and add a light to our 3D group. Inside my 3D group, I'll add an object and we're gonna add a point light. And as soon as we add a point light, it's only affecting our Polaroids because those are 3D layers. So I'll take this up to about 500 or so. And for the position, we'll move this quite a bit higher. I'll change the fall off to about a 3%. Next, let's go ahead and turn on our depth of field. If you've never used the depth of field before, you'll notice that right away, all our Polaroids went out of focus. And that's okay, we're gonna go into our camera controls, and inside the camera controls, we actually have a depth of field amount. And we're gonna take this focus offset and change this to about negative 3000. All right, so that's how you can add some 3D Polaroids to your shot using M-Tracker 3D. I'm Stanislaw with Motion VFX. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.